The subgenre we'd like to explore is one that isn't necessarily only found in horror. It can overlap with other types of films. It can be visually striking and off-putting, but requires much creativity in order for the visual aspect to have meaning. So in today's video, we will take a look at certain movies that dive into body horror. If you want to know more about our take on the subject, you can click here to watch our video essay. For the sake of our list, we will define body horror as the corruption of the human physical form and that of nature. That corruption might be in the form of a transformation, disfiguration, or just abnormality. And it should be a recurring theme, not just one shocking scene that is disconnected from the feel of the film. So strap in, be sure not to eat anything while watching, and we present you 10 movies containing body horror that you should check out. But before we continue, this video is sponsored by Surfshark, but more on that later. In no particular order, the first movie on our list does delve into a physical transformation, although subtly. A plus for those who want to ease themselves into the subgenre without feeling overwhelmed. What's that? What? There. Black Swan introduces us to Nina, a talented ballerina that is obsessive yet innocent, and has trouble letting go of her meticulous approach to dancing. I just want to be perfect. You what? Want to be perfect. <sighs> Which works against her as she tries to embody the coveted role of the Black Swan. Pushed by the director and by the new ballerina, Nina begins to access the sensuality and the darkness that is needed for the part. The transformation we see is mostly a result of the main character's mental decline. From Nina seeing glimpses of herself in the subway, to the scratches and odd rashes appearing on her skin. The elements of body horror drive the pervading sense of paranoia and disorientation, convincing us that we're witnessing someone lose their grip on reality. The second movie on our list goes a bit further into the disgusting and weird. Eraserhead uses body horror not as one sole element pertaining to one character, but as a recurring one within different characters and objects in the film in order to cause unease and discomfort. The simple story of a man that has to deal with his new parental reality becomes a surreal nightmare in the hands of David Lynch. Just as an example, when the protagonist meets his girlfriend's parents, he remains unresponsive as distressing things occur around him, like the odd conversations, the fits his girlfriend and her mother are subjected to, the miniature bleeding chickens they're supposed to have for dinner, and of course, the eventual reveal of the baby. Something as mundane as dinner with your in-laws, or something as hopeful as a newborn child, is deformed into something horrendous and shocking. The film seems to use body horror as an allegory about the fears of parenthood. Not a weapon. But I don't trust it. You know, I don't trust anything that's... <laughs> You're right, right? For the following movie on our list, we're going with a sci-fi, documentary-style, found-footage film that more closely resembles what comes to mind when we hear the term body horror. District 9 introduces us to a race of aliens that are stranded in Johannesburg. They are pretty much seen as a bother and are said to be relocated further away from the city. During the eventful eviction campaign, Wickes comes into contact with a fluid that gradually changes his physiology into that of an alien. We've seen that Wickes sees the creatures as a burden and has much contempt for them, so his repulsion is magnified when his arm becomes disfigured. He soon realizes that it's not just an aesthetic change. His nerves have fused. He can't just cut it off. It's spreading, and it's rewriting his DNA to the point that alien technology recognizes him as one of their own. The unlikable and cowardly man who thinks only of himself is forced to reevaluate some of his prejudices as his way of seeing the world is changed through force. The 
The next movie on our list approaches body horror less from the perspective of a physical metamorphosis, but rather as an affront to the human body through animalistic violence. When we first meet Justine in Raw, we learn that she is a strict vegetarian. As she begins her journey through veterinarian school, she sees herself forced to renege on her principles in order to conform to a system that is degrading and absurd. I'd really like to know how much of the hazing is realistic and how much of it is a metaphor for what we normalize in society because, damn. As part of her many initiations, Justine eats meat. Her body reacts immediately. She begins chewing on and eating her own hair. She sneaks bits of raw meat until she eventually tastes human flesh. We see that Justine is conflicted, but she also craves the freedom and power that come with her new appetite. Her tame life opens up as she straddles the line between asserting herself in her newfound persona and losing herself to her hunger. As we reach the halfway point, we come to one of two David Cronenberg movies included on our list, Videodrome. Max Wren is a TV producer that is looking for the next big thing, because normal television violence and softcore porn aren't enough. He's shown a pirated signal of a show where people are violently tortured and killed. From the moment he sees it, he becomes fixated on the program and wants to find out more about it. It's just torture and murder. No plot, no characters. Very, very realistic. I think it's what's next. Altering his perception of reality as he goes further down the rabbit hole, the body horror we observe is in the deformation of technological elements as well as Max's own body, showing the transition towards the new flesh. <sighs> Breathing cassette tapes, expanding TV screens, the slot that opens up within Max's chest, all little disturbing elements that represent the merging of humanity and media content. Get the video drone. Long live the new flesh. <laughs> Done well before the internet and social media became part of our daily lives. Another type of horror that can create disgust is finding out your information has been taken over by an intrusive entity stealing your identity and knowing all your personal information. Thankfully, there's a way of getting rid of this ungodly intruder by using today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN, a benign protection that helps you maintain your identity. It's very useful when you're trying to watch content from various streaming services that would usually be geolocked. You just simply click on the server you want and easily switch your digital location. But it's also a great layer of protection that we use when watching content or doing research on public Wi-Fi because you never know who might be watching or trying to take over your digital identity. It also has other security features like Surfshark Alert. This helps you monitor your personal online data and will warn you of any potential data breaches. Or Surfshark Antivirus. This can take a quick or full scan of your device to let you know if you're virus free. Another feature I love is that one subscription can cover an unlimited amount of devices, meaning you can spread this benign protection to close friends and family. So try it out for yourself. Secure your privacy with Surfshark. Enter coupon code MOVIE for an extra three months free at surfshark.deals movie. Let Surfshark's protection take over you. Now back to the list. Do it again. The following film on our list might leave you scratching your head on more than one occasion. Possession is a very heightened and surreal story of a couple that is breaking up. Think of the over-the-top performances by Jack Nicholson and Shelley Duvall in The Shining with the feel of Rosemary's Baby. Mark is obsessive and violent, especially when he learns that Anna is cheating on him. That is not your family. Your family is here. You must call him now. But I can't on the phone. I don't trust you. Anna is growing increasingly unstable, and in the midst of it all, is their only child, caught in their wake. In addition to the bursts of anger and violence, the self-harm, the elements of body horror are seen within Anna's secret life. Fascist. 
the creature she keeps hidden and evolves as she becomes more unhinged, the thing she protects violently if anyone gets too close. Was it real? Was it a representation of her psychosis? The movie won't give you answers to all of your questions, but will make you think and try to bring your own interpretation to it. The next movie on our list just might have you asking, what the fuck did I just watch? It's not easy to describe Tetsuo the Iron Man, because even though it has a short runtime, it's a lot. A black and white assault on the senses in the vein of Eraserhead, but more experimental, with frenetic editing, very little dialogue, with hints of expressionism and kabuki, manga and anime influences, and more. It starts off strong with a disgusting factor as a metal fetishist inserts a rod into his thigh. It develops maggots, which makes him run away and be accidentally killed when he gets hit by a car. The driver then suffers the victim's wrath as his body morphs into one that is metal, intertwined with flesh. If the description already turned you off on the idea of watching the movie, that's fine. It's not for everyone. It gets pretty rough, especially as the unnatural transformation gradually consumes the protagonist and his body becomes less recognizable. The costume and set designers should be commended for their work because they managed to bring this body horror nightmare to life. Please, please, you're an expert in danger. Please, listen to me. Something terrible. Please. The last three films on our list are remakes of 1950s horror movies and part of our go-to favorites. In Invasion of the Body Snatchers, humans are slowly being replaced by aliens, but most people don't notice it. There is something different. Something is missing. What? Emotion, feelings. He's just not the same person. It's interesting that if you didn't catch it at first, after repeat viewings, you might notice little details in the background of people acting strangely or staring at the main characters, further enforcing the sense of red scare paranoia the film is going for. But somehow today I felt everything had changed. People were different. Not just Jeffrey, but everybody. People keep saying that their loved ones have changed and aren't themselves. Characters become devoid of emotion and meet in secret. All little hints that lead the protagonist to discover the horrible truth a little too late. The movie goes into body horror in the way the creatures replace humans. The pods, the adult-sized fetuses, the transitions. All impressive practical effects to fuel your nightmares. If the way the creatures screech when pointing to a human isn't chilling enough for you, the one moment that always disturbs me is the one with the mutated dog. If you've seen it, you'll know. Our next to last film on the list is a classic that we've spoken about often on this channel, The Thing. The movie begins with an odd scenario. Near a research base in Antarctica, people on a Norwegian helicopter are shooting at a dog, trying to kill it as it runs away. As the story advances, the dog is taken in as some of the American researchers go off to the Norwegian base to find out more. It soon becomes obvious that something went wrong and left behind a strange inhuman corpse. Found this. Jesus the dog shows why it was being hunted. It transforms into a tentacled monster that attacks the other dogs in the kennel. The group of researchers are soon besieged by an alien that has the potential of taking over the world quite rapidly if it escapes. To make matters worse, it can take the shape of anyone or anything. If it takes us over, then it has no more enemies. Nobody left to kill it. And then it's one. Like our previous entry, there is a pervading sense of paranoia in not knowing who is human and who isn't. But it's accentuated by the isolated location, the storm, and the closed circle mystery. Seeing as the characters are dealing with a threat from beyond whose purpose they can't comprehend and whose true nature they can't identify, the story feels like a plunge into cosmic horror. <laughs> 
The film's legendary usage of practical effects creates all sorts of undefined monstrosities as the alien transforms into humans, animals, and all sorts of mutations. It's body horror at its finest. I can only teleport inanimate objects. Well, what happens when you try to teleport living things? Not while we're eating. We end this recommendation list with another entry from David Cronenberg's filmography, The Fly. It's a very lean, doomed romance sci-fi horror movie that doesn't waste any time in getting into the plot and doesn't have much fat. Seth Brundle is a scientist that lacks a social life. He meets Veronica at an event and tries to impress her by bringing her back to his place and showing her his invention, telepods that allow for teleportation. From one pod to another, uh, disintegrated there and reintegrated there. They eventually begin a relationship and try to work out the kinks regarding the teleportation of live beings. One evening, as he's feeling insecure about Veronica meeting her ex, Seth decides to test the device on himself. The problem is that a fly gets into the telepod with him and their DNA gets mixed up. Initially, Seth sees that he's more energetic, stronger, he doesn't need to sleep. Eventually, the changes become less positive. What's happening to me? Am I dying? Is this how it starts? Am I dying? He develops rashes, grows thick patches of hair, loses his ability to digest food on the inside. Most of the film's runtime is dedicated to Seth and Veronica's relationship, so when the changes start to occur, it hits harder because you've seen them at their best. And now you see the impact the changes have not only on Seth's body, but on the relationship, on Veronica. Body horror is used to showcase the physical metamorphosis, starting off small at first, but gradually taking away Seth's humanity with every organ he loses. I'm an insect who dreamt he was a man and loved it, but now the dream is over. The transformation represents old age and illness, how they can affect the person that's concerned, as well as the loved ones. And that's it for our list. But what's your favorite body horror movie? Please let us know down in the comments. And until next time.